Hello and welcome to episode number two of Out of the Box. Now the whole idea of my series of Out of the Box videos is to showcase something that is rather unusual, extreme, expensive, uh, seldom seen on the internet. And uh, today I received a package from Canada and I'll tell you more about it in a minute. But I hope that you're going to stick around and see what's in it because it is quite an amazing thing. And uh, it has just blown me away the generosity of my subscribers and the people that send me things through the mail never ceases to amaze me. So I'm going to go and have a look at it now and show you what it is. So this package was donated by Clive Redden from Ontario in Canada. Clive is one of my regular viewers and he has often contributed in the past. Now this looks like he's sending me an assault rifle, so I'm really quite excited. I think this might have slipped through customs without them knowing. Oh, it doesn't look like it's an assault rifle at all. It's a combination of letters, books, and a large box. So this says on here, Britain's Historical Series. And there's a registered number there, 459993. So I'm very excited about this. So let's read the letter. This letter is from Clive Redden in Vineland, Ontario. And he says, Dear Marty, at last, something that does not need restoration. This belonged to my father. No one in the family wanted it, and I can't think of a better home for it than yours. He goes on to say that he had a hobby shop. And he built a huge boat and put it on display and somebody said that they wanted to buy it. A price was given and it was sold. The guy that bought it uh, asked if he could build him a specific ship, K. Watin. Found some pictures and said I could, found original plans and found the real ship. Took three years to build. It's in the book where the marker is. Well, we'll have a look at that. My father had always wanted a coronation coach when the man wanted to buy my whale hunter. I said I'd trade it for the coach. He found one and we traded. My father put it on display, but I'm not sure how to secure the horses, unfortunately. Be careful unrolling them. A paper showing the order is inside. Enjoy and thank you for all the entertaining and educational videos you do for all of us. I know we appreciate it very much. All the best to Julie and Kevin from Clive Reading. Well, Clive, thank you very much. Now I'm going to First of all, we'll look at this book and find out what your ship looked like that took three years to build. Here we go. So, Clive Reddin's model of the Kiwatin. Wow, very, very good. Very knowledgeable and creative modeler he is. And it took three years to build. My goodness, what an amazing story. So, let's open the box and check out this model that Clive has sent me. Oh wow, look at this. If I'm not mistaken, this is a Britain's branded Coronation Coach made in 1954. And it's complete in the box with all of its bits and pieces. This is incredible. I'm going to take out all the various bits and pieces here and we can have a look at them together. First up is one of the horses. Now there's eight horses and the horses are Windsor Greys they're called. The horses are hollow and they're made of some sort of metal. Apparently this uh, real coach weighed four tons and therefore could not be pulled any faster than walking pace by these eight horses. And they have quite a lot of detail painted on them, like red saddles, a lot of gold braiding, and some blinkers and horse reins. The horse reins are actually cast out of metal. They actually look like they're made of real leather, but they're not. They're quite solid. Each of the four horses also has two holes on each side to connect these, what are called, traces. Now these traces, I guess, represent chains and the like that link all the horses together and uh, make them pull as one when they're connected to the carriage. 
So I'll be having a go at putting these on later and see how this thing looks when it's completed. Now here's a couple of notes from the previous owner. It says rider front raised leg to behind rider then back two legs. It's all a little bit like code. It's got an order there. I think I can make some sense out of this. And there's a highly detailed diagram of how the horses get anchored across the back two legs and chest to the tip of the red saddle. Does that make sense to you? Anyway, four of these horses are just the horses and four of them have a rider in charge of them. And these riders actually are called postilions and a postilion is defined as a person who rides the near side or left hand side horse of a team or a pair of horses drawing a coach carriage. So that's a new word for me, postilion. Now let's have a look at the coach itself. Goodness gracious, this is so heavy you would not believe. I'm struggling to grip it with two fingers here. Right, what a marvellous piece of history. So this coronation coach was built in 1954 and it represents the coach that Queen Elizabeth and Duke of Edinburgh travelled in on the 2nd of June in 1953 when Elizabeth was crowned Queen of England following the death of her father King George VI. Now there's some great detail on this model and let's just point out a few bits and pieces that I find interesting. Quite sturdy and very heavy for one. On the four corners of the coach there are four titans and they're not particularly well represented on the model but they're supposed to be blowing seashell trumpets. On the side here there's some nice detail that's cast quite well. This is probably one of my favourite bits of, the, of this model. It looks really good there. There's this duck egg blue panelling on the sides and these brown things here are actually leather straps that formed part of the suspension for this carriage when it was rolling down the cobbled streets of old England. And Queen Elizabeth was quoted as saying that this was one of the most uncomfortable rides of her life because the sprung leather didn't really do much to absorb the shocks. You can see the figurines there inside. The Queen is the one on the right hand side of the carriage as it's travelling forwards. I noticed also that the Duke of Edinburgh seems to be in charge of a sword or a mace. On the front here there's a steering linkage and I could be mistaken but there is an ugly blob of metal there and the gold paint looks slightly discoloured. I think that maybe this was broken and has been repaired by someone. It still seems to function okay and the wheels spin freely. Underneath you can say it says made in England, Britain's Limited. Here's another reference to Britain's Limited. It's embossed in gold ink on this beautiful burgundy felt that's on the interior of the box. What a beautiful presentation. So I'm now going to have a go to assemble this. I wonder when the last time this was assembled and who it belonged to when it was brand new. I bet you some child played with this daily after witnessing the coronation which was the first coronation ever streamed live on British television. It was probably seen by more people that saw the moon landing. I don't know my facts but I can imagine that to be the case. So it's a little bit tricky getting all these things to line up and then positioning the the whole assembled model so that they it holds together and nothing falls over or falls off. So now I'm just giving you a nice close-up look of these riders on their horses. The postilions on their horses and the coach itself all connected and moving in unison in one direction with the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh sitting inside. This is a huge model and I reckon it wouldn't have been cheap in its day. I wonder how many were made and how many were sold. I consider myself to be very fortunate to have one of these now in my collection. I'm going to measure it and tell you how long it is. Let's have a look. It's a whopping 52 centimeters, which is about 20 and a half inches. And check this out. Just for out of curiosity, I weighed it. It's nearly half a kilo, 425 grams. 
and that's not including the metal horses. So anyway, I wondered what kind of metal it was. Now I have a magnet here, and I thought I'd touch various parts of the model to see if there was any steel or iron enclosed. Well, these horses are 100% not magnetic, so I suspect they could be made of lead. And the coach is the same. This magnet will not stick anywhere other than the axles, which must be made of steel. Britain's was quite famous for making lead soldiers in its early days, and I guessed this was in the transition period to safer toys for children to play with, where they were phasing out the lead. Anyway, for my own interest, I bought this instant lead test from a local hardware shop. And I thought I'd give it a go and see whether in fact this is lead or whether it's a fairly common or garden and safe metal alloy of some description. This card with the rings is to check that the chemicals are indeed actually detecting lead if you get a negative result. I noticed there's some paint missing at the top here, so I just cleaned it off with some cotton buds. And now I'm going to use this lead check to see if that metal is in fact lead. I have to crush two ampules contained in this cardboard tube and then gently mix them together. These circles are embossed with lead to check the results so that if you get a negative result you can check the operation of the chemicals by rubbing them on those circles. If it detects lead the end of this device should turn red. So here goes crushing the first ampule, now the second, it's a great feeling by the way. Give it a shake. Now this creates a yellow solution that you have to extrude out of the sponge end of this detector. It looks pretty gross. It's quite thick and oily looking. Anyway, that should be enough for the purposes of the test. So it now says you just rub it on the part of the model or the, the item you're checking. And like I said, if it turns red, then that's a, a good indication that it is made of lead. Well, this has gone red almost instantly. They reckon the darker the red, the higher the lead content. In the instructions, it says the swabs will detect high levels of leachable lead. And it also says there that if it turns red, then a hazardous level of lead is present. So I guess these would not pass the toy industry standards of today. Since I'm here, I cut the end off of the first test I did and I'm rubbing it on the paint to see if it's lead-based paint. Well here there's no reaction. So now I'm going to test that the stick is in actual fact working by using this test confirmation card. These circles, as I said before, are impregnated with lead. So you can test the chemicals out. And there you go. So that's proof that the device worked and also proof that the paint does not contain lead. Now here's a few close-ups so you can see some of the beautiful details of this model. Even though it is a little bit of a rough casting, there is a lot of detail in it. Uh, Matchbox at the same time made their own Coronation coach set, and here's a couple of pictures of that. This is not mine, I got this off the internet. As you can see, this one uses chains to join the horses together, and a central drawbar, which seems to be a better option. Uh, here's a picture of the real thing, which is in the Royal Mews in Buckingham Palace. Now the doors you can see, I've got a marvellously detailed grandmaster piece of artwork on the side. Now obviously Matchbox and Britain's Limited couldn't duplicate that, so they opted just for a plain panel of colour instead. Anyway, I've packed all this away and my intention is to order online a purpose-built display case. And when it comes, I'm going to give this just a wipe over with some damp cloths to get some of the dust off and then I shall put it proudly on display somewhere in my house. Now because I've been working with a lead model, before I have my supper tonight, I thought I'd better just wash my hands thoroughly in my bathroom sink. Well, thanks for sticking around. I hope you found that presentation interesting. Remember, that was the Britons Limited, uh, made in 1954, Queen Elizabeth II's Coronation Coach and quite a magnificent model it was too. Uh, so thank you Clyde for sending that to me and rest assured it's going to be well maintained and looked after and uh, well it's probably till the end of my life. So by the way if you haven't checked out the 
first the number one out of the box show that I did you should try and check it out because it's actually quite a bit of fun and I hope to do more of these in the future but until then this is Marty from Marty's Matchbox Makeovers saying thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next time. Goodbye.